Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today, I'm reviewing your portfolios. So this is episode three of the portfolio review that I'm doing. And just like last time, I wanna give a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Nordgreen Watches. Nordgreen is sponsoring this video and I love their watches so much. They're designed by ex Bang & Olufsen designer, Jacob Wagner. Uh, there are so many different versions on the website that you guys can check out. And every time you buy a watch, they have the Giving Back program, which gives back to worthy causes across the world. And in today's video, I can give you guys 15% off if you check out the link down below and use code SAMDD, which I guess stands for Sam Does Design. Uh, so yeah, thanks Nord Green for sponsoring today's video. So we're gonna jump straight into it now. I've loaded up the portfolios for today into my iPad. And just like last time, it's really important to know what type of devices your portfolio will be viewed on when you send them. I could have viewed these portfolios on my laptop, on my phone, on my iPad. And last episode, I got a lot of questions about whether or not you should have an online portfolio versus a PDF portfolio. And I think it's really important to have an online portfolio. That is absolutely granted. But I've asked for PDF portfolios because that's what we ask for here at Precipice Design. And the reason why we do that is because websites and students, and when you're starting to host websites, looking for placements and stuff like that, and when you uh, graduate and look for work as well, we can't guarantee that in six months after you submitted your website portfolio to us, and then we come to you in the next six months and go, oh, remember this person that submitted their portfolio? They had a project that was perfect for the one that we're about to work on. Let's go to their website and check it and see if we can get them in. And then um, your website has expired because you didn't want to pay for the domain name for the next year or so, especially students. And I did this at university as well. I had a website for like a year. It got to renewing the website. And I was like, do I want to have my website this year or do I want to eat this week? And uh, I decided to just terminate the website uh, and everything that I would have sent in an email to say, hey, check out my website, it's got all my work on it, no one would have been able to find me after that. So the reason why we still ask for portfolios in PDF format is because they are more reliable, we can archive them, we can double check them, we can go back through them later on. So I would recommend doing a PDF portfolio and doing a website portfolio as well. They're two huge tasks and I get that. Uh, not only that, but each portfolio you send off should be tailored specifically to that company. So the website, maybe you can have, um, let's say you've got a section on medical design. The next section is app design that you've done, maybe to support the medical design that you've done. The next section could be a different type of design, let's say movie set design or something. Um, if you submit your portfolio to different companies that specialize in those things, only submit the projects that are relevant to that company. On a website, you can upload everything because they can search for it and go through it themselves and, and sort it out for themselves. But when you're submitting a PDF portfolio, always tailor it to the company that you're applying for so the jobs are relevant to them. Which brings me on to the first portfolio we're gonna go through. It's from someone called Justin. Hey, Justin. And in the email that uh, Justin sent to me, he said that he is a toy designer uh, based on the internships that he's done. So he's done some internships at some amazing companies, but now he wants to look for work in other design categories as well. And we'll go through the CV first and then we'll go through the portfolio. So going down here, I like the fact that uh, we've got some huge um, subheadings and then some easy to read sub subheadings, uh, which I like. Skills, perfect because it separates them out into individual ones and it doesn't say how good he is at each one, which um, is my pet peeve when people put on uh, a graph to show I am a four out of 10 at Photoshop or I am 15% good at this program. Um, you're not the ones to judge that one. I am looking at your portfolio and it's great to list the, the programs that you're good at, but it's not great to list how good you think you are at them in the grand scheme of things. So uh, it's a good clean layout. Um, one page, perfect. Uh, and yeah, this is a, a, a safe portfolio. There's some misalignment here with where you can see like Hasbro and then like machined and fabricated. That's like, 
there's, there's some funky stuff going on there maybe. Uh, so when you start to look deeper at this uh, typographically and the, uh, just graphically in general, maybe you could do some tightening up just a little bit. Uh, you can do that in, yeah, same again, where you, we've got Justin Dolan here, and we've also got like hobbies include rock climbing. You can see that they're so close to being lined up, but they're not. You can do that in InDesign to set up baselines for the, for the text to go on. No matter what size the text is, it will always fit on the baselines. Maybe uh, good to spend some time setting those up uh, for a cleaner portfolio. So we'll move on to the portfolio itself. And this is where you can see a really fun open page uh, for a toy designer, um, which I like. It's a bold move putting a picture of yourself in a portfolio. It can uh, be a good thing, it can be a bad thing, depends on who's looking at the portfolio. I like this page because it's showing what you're about and it's showing what type of design you are. But this is the thing, because you've already told me in the email that you didn't want to be a toy designer anymore Whereas this screams the fact that you are a toy designer still. Like I said, the, the, the companies that you apply for, you need to submit portfolios that are tailored to their specific needs, right? So if you need, if a company needs someone that's good in uh, medical design, for example, I keep mentioning medical design, that's what we do here. Uh, they're not gonna go for someone that's done toy design. When in actual fact, if you sell them the fact that it's it could be quite a, a parallel um, type of experience because you're working to a budget, you're working with manufacturing constraints, you had market research to work with, you had usability, you had safety with toys, um, passing all sorts of um, regulations and tests and stuff. If you run that parallel and you bring out those specific parts of your projects instead of this uh, really fun, playful image, um, then maybe you could spin it a different way and you get less questions and in interviews about do you really want to be a toy designer? Why are you coming to uh, a, a medical design company, for example? Um, but I like it. It's a nice, refreshing way. Uh, and again, the companies that you worked for, great. You would have got some really cool experience at these places. So the only thing is to maybe dial down the um, toy design aspect and then dial up the skills, individual skills you've learned along the way. Uh, so we've got a toy, we've got a collection here for uh, Sesame Street, which is cool. Uh, competition that you've won, great. Solution, so let's, okay. What I haven't done this time is actually uh, scroll all the way through. I'm gonna do that now, because if I'm in a real world scenario, I'm looking at, um, okay, yeah. If I'm looking at portfolios in the real world and I've got 50 to go through, this is as fast as I'm gonna scroll through. Sorry for anyone getting uh, seasick or <laughs> motion sickness. We're gonna go through to the top again. Okay, cool. So actually looking uh, further down your portfolio, you've got some other projects that aren't toy design, um, which I would say lead with that if, um, if that's what you wanna go into, you know? Like whatever project you wanna go into, whatever type of design, lead with the project that fits that the most. That's gonna get the attention of the person looking at the portfolio and make them want to look more into the portfolio later on. If I was looking at uh, an engineer for a really serious, dry medical design project and I opened up this page, uh, you'd be the judge of if I carry on or not, right? But if I go further and I see, okay, you know, this is some serious stuff going on here um, and it's, you know, you end up with, with projects that are designed well, nicely. You know, I like what's going on here. The renders uh, are these real, these are real. Uh, the photography is really nice. Um, uh, some context shots would have been nice. Some, you know, even nicer. But yeah, I like it. Then we come on to the next project, which is a little bit more serious. Um, I mean, toy design is serious. It's a business and it's a, um, you know, it, it is a serious field but the bright colors and, and all sorts, is, it's, it's jarring compared to the portfolios that I normally look at. It's nice and it's refreshing, I like it, but um, yeah, maybe lead with a different project, which I'm gonna come on to now, which is Color Cord. Um, let's have a look now. Okay, so it's a, a tool for children to learn how to play an instrument, is that, yeah, okay. 
we've got some facts in here. And then this is what I like to see some sketches going on. So we've got refined sketches. What I would say as well is you've got a nice linear story happening here, um, but let down a little bit by the refined sketches heading. Now, what I mean by that is it's almost like you're then segregating each skill. So you're like, I did a day of sketches. Now I did a day of CAD. When in actual fact, the design process isn't like that. These might have taken you two to three days over the course of like grabbing a coffee, you're inspired one day and um, you do the sketch, right? But if you, if you pull it out and say, I did some refined sketches, it brings it back down to a university type project where it's like, today I learned about sketches and I'm showing you the sketches, you know? You're so close to integrating it really nicely into the project. Um, it's just the, the heading that lets you down actually. Um, because it's, it's just segregating um, each too much, you know? Uh, some form sketching, I like these. Um, yep, cool. So this is like some extra research, looking at like a real guitar, and then a nice render at the end. And then, okay, and then I was gonna say like, yeah, I need some more information about how it actually works. So this is, is this like a screen, the, the fret board is like, it lights up. Oh. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>
I feel like this belongs in The Shining now, right? Uh, but it's, it's on brand and I get it, yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, uh, and someone is just about, I was gonna say it'd be nice to see someone sat on it instead of stood in front of it, uh, putting a, a shoe on, but you, uh, you can just about see they're sat on it on the very edge in the blur, which is fine, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's a nice project. But just some more in-context shots would be nice. You've gone here, but it's, this is like a studio render shot of an in-context shot, you know what I mean? I'd like to see, so you've pulled out the millennial um, problem and you're saying that there's no space and you want to make uh, homes nicer and it's storage and it's a stall. Uh, I would have it as like a really editorial image at the very end of like, this is the most perfect version of the flat that it could be in and this is going to sell it to you like the advert so imagine like in ikea um the the ranges that they've got in there and then it's like this is it makes it more real to have it in a in a real room whether you photoshop that in whether you render that whether you make it if you've made one um spray it up in the colors it's not far off and then like you can put it in a room even it's really nice um finding a room that's Nice and millennial friendly and small, not too aspirational, uh, difficult, I, I get it, but yeah, just some more in context shots. Citra, so again, now we're looking at more of the um, consumer tech instead of toy design, which uh, again, you could probably lead with, um, depending on what type of uh, company you wanna go to, but I like this, the, uh, the mock-ups, the rendering, I like it, the, yeah, someone using it. And you even got some internals going on. Yeah, I mean, that's nice. It's a nice project. Um, this is one of the, pro like this is a type of project that doesn't solve a problem. It, it's just nice design. <laughs> and that's okay sometimes. Uh, just to do design for the sake of expressing and making people feel better if they're excited to use this colorful, fun mouse instead of the normal, um, really aggressive, masculine, gaming-inspired mouse that you can buy. This is uh, a nice change to that. Maybe you could pull out on some, some of those contexts that, you know, you want to go into this um, consumer technology sector, but you want to not conform to the norms of the, uh, of that sector and that's why you're doing this and it gives the story a little bit more of a backstory. Um, I'm assuming that that's what you've done here. You've gone against the super masculine, aggressive gaming angle masses and, and done this as a response to that. And I've picked up on that on my own, looking through it. Maybe it would have been uh, just a little, I'm not gonna say paragraph because I don't read anything. Um, you know to tell the story and flesh it out a little bit like that. But cool, yeah, I like the portfolio. Um, I would just work on some of the headings. I would work on the order that it's in, depending on what company you want to apply to, uh, and dialing up more of uh, the things that are relevant to the company that you're applying to. But yeah, great job, like it. Cool, next we have Martha. Uh, and I can't remember where Martha's from, I think. She said Loughborough University, but I don't know, I don't read. Um, Again, let's go and look at this portfolio. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice clean layout. Um, we've got uh, one page again, perfect. I don't think CV should have anything more than one page, so I like it. Employment. Uh, okay, I, I got a little bit confused because we're going in 2017, 2016, 2015, and I saw 2018. I got confused, but... It's from 2016 to 20, uh, 2006 to 2018. That's fine. That's cool. Um, yeah, again, mm, mm, confused why photography is bold. Are you better at photography than you are everything else? I don't know. Is that a mistake? I don't know. Confusing though. But uh, apart from that, I like it. Um, I like the clean layout and it tells me everything I need to know. Cool. Next, let's look at the portfolio. Um, abstract front page, is this interior? No, is this architecture? 
I mean, it's like, it's, okay, so we've got like an abstract design going on. Cool. Hi, Martha. Hi, Martha. Hello. Um, so this is like a mini portfolio. Uh, uh, sorry, this is like a mini CV, I guess. That's cool. Uh, and then we're going to jump straight in. Let's do the standard. Whoa, now. Come on now, internet. We're going to go through as quick as we can. A lot more text in this portfolio I'm seeing. I'm seeing more text than images. Uh, but we got to the end. Cool. Okay. So let's go through it again. These uh, graphical contents pages are, are nice, but they're difficult to execute well. You're so close, I think, so close, but I think the text is not as legible as it needs to be. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting confused with some of the text going on. And also you need to be very aware of the fact that people read things differently. Okay, so what I mean by that is if you have four elements on a page, do you number them from one to four, left, right, left, right, or like a column in a newspaper, one, two, three, four, or do you do it as a clock, like one, two, three, four? People read things very differently depending on the scenario and no, there, there's no right way of, of doing that. Uh, that's the bane of our lives when we do design research here because when we're trying to look at uh, the way things should be laid out in instructions for use for medical devices, and we have this type of diagram going on, we don't know how to number it because people read things differently. So for example, with your page here, if I had just come off the back of reading a newspaper, I might say, I want to read it as in one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, you know? Because I've been reading a column from a newspaper and that's how you do it. If I've just come off the back of reading a comic book, then yeah, I'm going to read it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. And it's also, it's difficult then because um, technically on this page, seven is before six because we, leave, we read from left to right, right? Uh, just something to think about. I mean, I like the graphical contents page and it's, it's nice to see some effort gone into it. Um, and I feel like I've destroyed this page way too much than it deserves. It's a nice page, just the, tw the tweaks uh, I would use for that. Uh, nice, I like these renders. These are, I mean, people from Loughborough University, man, they know how to render stuff. They know how to make things look good. <laughs> That's, uh, I went to Brunel University. There's a little bit of a rivalry between Loughborough and Brunel. And um, let me know down in the comments if you know about any other uh, university rivalries because I get the impression that Brunel is seen as the engineering, boring, maths-based one and Loughborough is just the pretty pictures but nothing works one. Let me know down in the comments if you agree. <laughs> but my God, you can make some nice renders. Anyway, uh, really nice circular design, cool. A uh, lot of paragraphs, I don't want to read them. Um, So how does it work? Well, the coffee goes in the top, okay, yeah. And then, oh, and then the water gets, okay, squeezed up through the, through the bottom, through heat, I guess, and it comes out the bottom. I don't know, I'm speechless. I'm trying to figure out how it works. Uh, the, the other thing that I would say I've picked up in other portfolios in the past is the layout should be so minimal, I should know exactly where to look for each, um, Paragraph whenever I'm looking through it. So for example, we had uh, the heading here sort of in the middle at the bottom and then it moves a little bit and then it moves a little bit again. And then when we come to this one, number two, the heading is in a completely different place. And if I'm zipping through the portfolio like I did uh, in the beginning, I need to know exactly where I'm looking very fast. Um, some infographics and stuff, um, but we're on a different project now. Injection mold tool, design and manufacture. Okay, so this is some, some manufacturing stuff going on. I like it. This is um, a nice way to show um, a dry subject like injection molding. Uh, yeah, it's nice. We got, so the, the use that you got very small down in the bottom here, and then these should be the most amazing photos of it possible. Like if you're doing a full studio shot, um, that could be full page, like wow me with the finished result as well. Um, that might be nice on the front page even. But very nice. 
UI design, okay, cool. Uh, I don't want to read all of this. How it works. Okay, small paragraph. I like it. Turn on the device and start to chat in sign language. When the connection is made between the two pads, a signal is sent to the watch. It puts these signals together, processes the sentence, and then speaks the sentence aloud. I like it. Um, nice. That, would, that, that little snippet. Did I miss that at the start? Yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> also, um, the... And I, um, fall, I've fallen victim to this as well. When you want to line stuff to the right, it's, it's more difficult to read because every time I want to start the first uh, line, um, I'm moving around each time. So typographically uh, difficult. And I do this all the time as well. So it's, it's no issue, but maybe this is why I didn't read this section here. Um, uses eTasu to translate sign language into spoken words to promote the inclusion of deaf and hard of hearing people in general. Yeah, I like it. Um, cool, so it's a UI project, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. I'm a little bit confused how it's a user interface. Um, I mean, it is, but when, when all is said and done, you finish the project, the, do the e-tattoos become invisible and transparent? Because that's what we're showing here. In which case, it's a no interface interface, right? And the only interface is a spoken word. So I, you know, maybe it's a user experience or a user, uh, it's a service design rather than an interface design because there is no interface, right? But I like the project, I like the inclusion, I like the thought process behind it and it's so difficult to show a service or uh, an interface with no interface and I get it. I like m maybe more of these uh, comic book strips that would be cool to, um, to give me something more to look at instead of reading, you know? But it's a really nice project. Uh, it's just so close to telling the story really well. Could do with some elevation, that's all, that's all. Number four, rooster sailing, aft camera mount. I don't know anything about sailing, so this is gonna be interesting to read through. So the process, uh, oh, the process. It's all on one page, okay. Uh, so, but, but you've got some traction here with the companies that you worked with, which is cool. Um, I mean, I'm going to skip over this project. I don't know anything about um, sailing. I don't know anything about camera mounts. Um, I'm guessing this is from start to finish the five prototypes that you did before you had the, the final one, but also the card on the left doesn't look like the ones on the right. I don't know with that one. I'm sure it's a nice project. I just don't know enough about it. <laughs> five UX, okay. Uh, Bruce set by O2. Uh, customer experience team, design a smartphone app that enhances the experience of living in a smart city. I prototype the app using Azure. Uh, check it out by scanning the... Okay, so I can actually go through and do it. That's cool. Um, okay, so the persona. Yeah. With some... Uh, we've got some research going on. Got some app design. I like this. I like seeing the progression. They're almost uh, swapped for me. So I, again, I read from left to right and I want to see the early stuff first and then it's progressing through as a timeline, then I'll see the more finalized stuff. So I would say, can you guys hear that? I would say that uh, I would swap those around, but I like the site map as well. Uh, cool. I mean, yeah, again, it's difficult to show an experience and the user journey and stuff behind the user interface because um, Okay, that's a new project. <laughs> uh, I like this comic book, uh, but I don't, the, the text is, is, is too much again, but the, I like the idea of a, of a comic book, it's nice. Next, Nike, uh, number six, Nike, Nike Golf Redesign, heating food on the go. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I like that um, for people out on the, uh, on the golf range maybe, they're getting a bit hungry and they're away from the, the restaurant or whatever, uh, it's nice. I like this design. It's a one page one. I mean, did you work with Nike? Have you used Nike's logo with their permission? Have you said this is a passion project and I am what we like? I don't know. This project is, is, it looks like it could be big enough for three or four pages in your portfolio and you've put it on one. Um, so Evo, focus experience of using 3D computer software. We had five weeks of model, 
household objects uh, with at least one articulating part. Cool, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, interesting stance to say that it's your first time using a 3D software in a portfolio. So are you telling me now that uh, you're good at this software? Or are you telling me now that you've used it once? In which case am I gonna need to train you when you come? Um, I would say that this model is good enough to say this is, you know, you don't need to bring it back and say, oh, but it was my first go. Be confident in your model. It's nice, it's, uh, it's detailed, it, um, it looks accurate. Um, so I would just say this is, this is uh, a, a 3D model that I've done. I don't think you need to say that it's your first time. Um, but yeah, nice job with the model. Rendering could probably do with some zhuzhing, uh, some a uh, bit more pizzazz. Um, but apart from that, great job, I like it. Oh, and that's the end. So yeah, that, these last two projects just tacked on at the end as a final page. Um, I think they need more confidence and more um, a definite mark in the ground of like, this is what I've done. Um, maybe flesh out this page a little bit, bring out some, some two pages. I like the fact that you've got, you know, in all the other projects, you said, here's the problem, this is what I'm doing to solve it. I like that approach. We get to the end with the Nike project and it's just, um, the problem is apparent. I know I, I got it when I first saw it, but it would have been nice to see your take on the problem. So it's not my problem that you're solving, it's, it's your take on the problem that you're solving. But uh, really nice portfolio again. Um, I feel like I've been way too harsh on this. Maybe it's because I know you're from Loughborough, uh, but I really think it's, it's a nice portfolio anyway. Um, yeah, so both people today um, have been super close to telling the story really nicely. And I've, and I've got every project and I've understood where they're coming from. Um, so great job, guys. I really enjoyed it. If you watching at home or wherever you are, uh, want to submit a portfolio, you can go and find out how to do that using the link below. Um, spoiler, it's on my website, you can go and do it on there. And special thanks again to Nordgreen for sponsoring today's video. Go and check out their website, they've got some really nice designs, designed by ex Bang & Olsen designer Jacob Wagner. Uh, and don't forget to sign up for their Giving Back program as well. Uh, to give back to the worthy causes that they have on their website. So that's everything for today's video, guys. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments below if you learned anything or if there's anything that I missed out for making a better portfolio. Let me know down in the comments because I love reading those as well. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.